this video, we're going to analyze everything that's given to us when we create a Rails application. If you followed along and added the Sublime text editor or any text editor to your Bash profile, you can do something like uh, Sublime dot and that will open up the full uh, the full application to you. And that opened up another window. I'll bring it over here. And if you, for some reason, didn't, or uh, editing your Bash profile doesn't really sound like something you were in the mood for, you can also do this by typing in open dot, and it'll bring up the file system where it's located. And then you could you know, drag this into Sublime, and you'd accomplish the same exact thing that uh, I just did with the shortcut. And as you can see, using the Rails generator to create the application does quite a bit of the work for us. And you can see through right here, all the different files that were created just by running a few pretty simple commands. Uh, I'm gonna kind of traverse through each one of these and give a high level overview of what they do. Uh, here in the app directory, you have assets, controllers, helpers, mailers, models, and views. And we'll get into uh, each one of these uh, as we build out the application. For example, assets is uh, where you have your images, your JavaScript files, and your style sheets. Controllers are what control the code flow of the application. So this is where you'd run uh, some basic database queries, and this is what your views look to to know what to display on the screen. Helpers are some view helpers, so this is where you could put some custom methods that you want to your views to have access to. Mailers, it's pretty self-explanatory, that's where your mailers were, uh, would go if you want your application to send any email out, that's where the logic form will go. Uh, models, this is where you're going to place your most complex parts of your application, like your algorithms, everything like that, uh, are going to go in the models file. And your views, this is where all of your views, so everything the user sees, will be right here. This is where all your HTML code is going to go. By default, it gives us a application layout file, and in this file, you have all of the different uh, things you would need to be able to uh, be able to call other pages. So this yield method right here in the center, uh, this means that whatever page gets called is going to have the content placed right inside this block. So you don't need to put a head and a body tag in each one of your view pages. Uh, this does it for you. So this helps to protect against having any code duplication or anything like that in your views. Uh, Right here, the style sheet link tag. This brings in the style sheet. JavaScript include tag is going to bring in all the JavaScript files, and uh, it also gives that uh, the entire uh, pay every page and every site this tasky title by default. Uh, there's also ways of being able to customize this. For example, if you wanted to have every page to have its own title, then that's something that you can set up either in the view or in the controller. And so that's your application layout file. It's kind of like the wrapper for your application. And if you want to have a more complex application that has multiple application layout wrapper files, that's also possible and pretty easy to do. Uh, you use the controllers to, uh, to control that. Uh, the next one is this bin file. You're probably never going to use anything in this bin file. It's there for the application. It's not really something that you're going to customize on a regular basis. Now your config file is something you're going to do quite a bit of work with. Uh, right here it has the setup for all your environments. It has all of your initializers. These are files that run when the application server starts up. So right now, it gives a few pretty basic things. Uh, you don't usually have to edit these very often. Uh, the one that you do have to do a few updates on is this assets file, and this is, shows uh, the Rails asset pipeline, how to manage assets. But uh, usually what I'll do in the initializer file is put in things like a, uh, 
a mail connection. So if I want to connect to a mail API at the, every time the server starts, then I put up a file here called setupmail.rb and then put all the parameters in there. And then I know that will run every time the application starts up. Uh, locales, this is if you want to have your application use different languages besides just English. You could put Chinese or Spanish, anything right there. And uh, this is obviously not in the scope of a introductory, uh, uh, introductory uh, tutorial to Rails, but it is something that's pretty cool where you can have different translations placed with inside this locales folder and uh, the application will dynamically change based off of what you supply to it. Application RB file, this is one of your main configuration files and uh, this is one where you will put a few things like say you wanted a dependency to load on every application uh, load such as uh, wanting to bring in the CSV library or something like that then uh, you would be editing this. Uh, this file also sometimes has some requirement changes if you're playing around with the asset pipeline a little bit. You can control it here. Uh, this is also where you can do things like set, and you can even see examples of it right here. You can set the time zone for your application or the default locale and language, all those things right here. Uh, boot isn't really something that you're going to get into very often. Now, database, uh, when we created our, when we ran rake db create all, uh, it created this for us. So all of this uh, is shown. You can see that we're using the SQLite database and some of the different parameters associated with it. Typically, you won't have to edit this too much. Uh, then you have some other things like environment, which you won't play with too much, and then routes, which is one you will get into a lot. And you can see they have a lot of commented out code here to give you some examples for some things you can do. And as we build out this application, you will find that we will be using this a lot. There's going to be a, a lot of different things that we edit inside the routes folder and some ways that we can use some great shortcuts Rail gives us, but uh, the routes file is something you're going to be accessing quite a bit, so it's good to know where it's at and how to get used to it. So, so far we've gone through about half of the different things in the uh, file system of an application. And in the next video, we're gonna go through the second half of the file system.